like I said earlier, I think some of the folks will come hopefully trickle in pretty soon, but we want to be respectful of the candidate's time as well as y'all's time, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I, uh, this is a meet and greet slash forum where the structure of this will be a simple uh, greeting for myself to, to y'all and welcome you being here. Uh, we're going to, uh, Carmen, you have anything to say at the state level? Uh, just want to say thank you for what you're doing here in Sheridan County. Yeah, so, sure uh, do. Absolutely. Appreciate everybody being involved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we're fortunate to have our district uh, chair, uh, Brad Carver, here as well. You'll hear from him j in sh just shortly. Uh, he and I are going to go past the uh, back and forth with the questions to the gentleman. But what we're going to start off with is we're going to let them introduce themselves, take a couple minutes, just introduce yourself, who you are, and uh, why you're running for this position, okay? And we're going to start with uh, Jason first, and then we have Chris and Mel. All right. All right. Just take a couple minutes. Okay. okay, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm Jason Thompson. I'm running for National Committee Man, and I want to thank the organizers for having us back again. We were here in the in the spring for a forum. Uh, Chris and I were, and uh, I'm happy to be speaking with you again. I have to catch a plane tonight to go to St. Louis for the Republican National Lawyers Association Conference. And uh, I've been involved in this organization for years, and we're always, you know, learning new ways how to combat uh, new threats to ballot security and election law. But I made a commitment to come here tonight, and I'm glad to be here. I'm running for the seat because it would be an honor to represent you at the Republican National Committee. Uh, the job of the National Committee man is important for a lot of reasons. I want to serve you. Uh, to serve as, as a safeguard against unfair rules that would hurt the grassroots of the party. I want to make sure the values and principles of our platform are upheld and strengthened even more. And I want to make sure Georgia is strongly represented. I'm the only candidate running with a proven experience to do so, and I'm the only candidate running who has even completed a full term in a Georgia Republican Party grassroots leadership position. I'm not a professional politician. I'm not a political consultant. I began as a precinct chairman and worked my way up through, way up through the grassroots. And I'm one of you. I've served as district chairman for years and served on the Rules Committee of the Georgia Republican Party for at least eight years. The rules are not new to me. So no one asked me to run, and I don't have someone else to have to ask to do the research for me, I just know the rules. It has been part of what I do and live and breathe. And I'm a rules guy. I'm the only candidate who has a proven history of fighting uh, for all of you. Um, specifically, the 2012 National Convention, the RNC Rules Committee, under the influence of the attorney Ben Ginsburg, tried to, uh, attempted to take away the right of state parties to choose their own delegates. It would have given the, it would have given the right to the presumptive nominee, actually, to replace the delegates. And myself and a small group of people, including my wife, uh, fought against this. We wrote an open letter to then Chairman Reince Priebus, uh, which was picked up then by Michelle Malkin, then went to Mark Levin. And that hit the airwaves. Uh, we were able to successfully stop this horrible rules change attempt and save the integrity of the state party election process. That's only one example. I hope to be able to speak to you about more in detail the time that I'm here. And if you ever have any questions, you can always call me on my cell phone, which is 404-664-4626. I'll always be available to you. And if I'm blessed enough to be elected to this position, um, I'll be the most accessible RNC committee man that you've ever had. It's not about promises. Um, it's about proven leadership. And this isn't about building a resume. It's not about getting business. It's about the integrity of the grassroots, and that's why I'm running. I've never quit. I'm the only candidate that has the kind of proven grassroots leadership needed for this job to be the Republican National Committee man. And I ask for your support. And for those of you that are on the state committee, I would ask for your vote. Thank you, Jason. I'm Chris West. 
And uh, thank you also for coming out tonight. Uh, not the best weather, uh, but uh, thanks for, for making the trek to uh, be a part of this process. So I serve as chairman of the 8th Congressional District, which is in middle and south Georgia. i uh, married, uh, been married for since 2007, so see that's uh, 11 years, <laughs> is that right? Um, <laughs> we have one son. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> uh, we have a son, Preston, he's six, and I am a lawyer. I work for a, um, I'm a business attorney. I work with a commercial development company. We um, work with, uh, we have, do commercial developments throughout the southeastern U.S. Currently, with, I have, I think, uh, 22 active construction projects uh, that have permits pulled right now. So we are, uh, it's a good time in America. And that is a testament to our president and to uh, Congress actually passing a, uh, a tax reform bill that it makes sense, it gives some tax relief, and lowering the burden of the regulations uh, like the president has done, and putting uh, you know, good folks that uh, are in the, throughout the departments of the government to make uh, a, a, an environment where it's more friendly to do business. So um, it, it's a, a time unlike anything I've seen in, in my lifetime, uh, reminiscent of, of the Reagan years from, from, uh, from what I've read and, and understand about history, so it's an exciting time. The RNC National Committee, man, you know, this is a unique position, and it, it, we need to send the right person up there for the job. Uh, Georgia has always had strong representation from Randy Evans to Alec Hornivet. Uh, Georgia's been well represented, and not only the committee, man, we've also been well represented in our National Committee will enroll. And uh, as was alluded to, the State Committee will make the determination on August the 18th as to who will go up and uh, be Randy's replacement. And what we've been doing over the last almost year now is going out and talking with our State Committee members and our leaders across our party and making the case as to why we think we're that guy for that position. And I am honored to report to you tonight that we've had uh, the endorsement, we have the public endorsement of over 60 county chairs, current county chairs, that make up across our party from North Georgia to South Georgia, uh, all across our state. Uh, this is what makes our party. Uh, and it's incredibly validating for me to have uh, this, this number of county chairs, the people who understand the grassroots, who know what it's like to be a, uh, to, to get it done at the grassroots level, to for them to put their reputation next to mine, and for them to say, yeah, we think that we think Chris is the one for the position. Not only that, I've been uh, publicly endorsed by now over 130 grassroots leaders, and that that includes the 60. I'm going to be fair with that. So, 100 and include the, the 60 county chairs, a, a total of 130. Uh, grassroots and Republican activists. And uh, all of those folks are, are out on our website. I invite you to go check that out uh, at some point uh, tonight or, or uh, when you can. It's uh, www.chriswest.gop. Take a look at, at the, the quotes that are on there, folks that have, uh, have put their reputation next to mine. It's, it's incredibly validating. And I uh, look forward to answering any questions that you folks may have tonight. Thank you. Melvin Everson, candidate for a national committee man. A little history about Melvin. I've been a grassroots activist, conservative since age 10. <laughs> Grew up in South Georgia. Seventh of 10 kids. My father had a fifth grade education. Growing up in South Georgia, I grew up with no indoor plumbing, but my father challenged all of his kids that each day we got up God has given us an opportunity to make something out of ourselves. I have not been elected to a position in the Republican Party. Someone asked me, well, Melvin, how does that work? I said, neither was Donald Trump, but he is now president of the United States. I've campaigned in every county in this state, all 159, for Republican nominees, whenever that person was chosen. 
I just returned from South Georgia, my home county, where I spoke at a high school, a newly minted high school, where the first day of school will be tomorrow. Why am I running? Because I think, as the gentleman has stated, Georgia continues and needs to continue to have a strong voice on the national level. I'm not in it for another notch on my belt. I'm in it because I care about my state and I care about my country. That's why I supported, voted for, and sent Donald Trump money when he was running for president after he became the nominee. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a 23-year retiree from the U.S. military. It pains me every day when I see so many in this nation disrespect the flag that I swore to protect for 23 years. Every day the national anthem is performed, I will stand and salute it. I serve this country for people to have a right to freedom of speech and protect that freedom of speech and they can pr protest however they want to. But I stand to salute that flag. I'm a former city councilman, vice mayor of the city of Snellville, making history in Snellville. Former state rep, serving three terms making history in the state of Georgia. Someone of my pigmentation to win a contested race to the Georgia General Assembly had not been done in 150 years. I was the Democrats' worst nightmare in Georgia because my election was the first one under the new voter ID law in the state of Georgia. I remember when I got elected, then Governor Sonny Perdue was the first one to call me. Then Senator Saxby Chambers. Then Senator Johnny Isaacson. And then um, State GOP Chair Sue Eberhardt. Because what we did in Georgia sent a message throughout the state of Georgia that no, all blacks are not Democrats. We do have some conservatives here. And we need someone that's going to go to every sector of this state to bring in new voters and share the success of Don President Donald Trump, how he's reduced taxes, how he's grown this economy, how the unemployment rate is the lowest level it's been in African-American communities, Hispanic communities, the lowest level in 40 years. That didn't happen on Obama. That didn't happen on the Bill Clinton. It happened under President Donald J. Trump. And I will proudly say that when he is up for re-election in 2020, I will be on the front lines campaigning for Donald J. Trump to continue another four years to protect America and make it great again and continue the success that he has enjoyed so far in his first couple of years in office here. You need someone on the national level that's going to speak on your behalf as far as the grassroots and take your concerns and message to the RNC, share with them where Georgia is and why we deserve and continue to be a leading state for the South because we are here and we will continue to be read. So thank you very much and you can follow me on Melbourne for Georgia or you can reach me by calling me 770-843-0292. While serving in the House, I've had the pleasure of serving on the Judiciary Committee with the Democrat nominee, Stacey Abram. Served with her for over four years. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to get ready. This is going to be the election of our lifetime. And I say that very sincerely. Let's not take this for granted. We have a fight on our hand. She is very intelligent, and she knows how to play the game. And we need someone out there on the front line with our nominee for governor, Ryan Kemp, on the national level, in, our, in D.C. to continue this battle. When um, time permits itself, and I answer all the questions as I come back, and I'll go into more details as far as why I feel I'm the best candidate to be the next national committee man for the state of Georgia. 
thank you all three for those comments. Okay, so reminding, reminding the candidates as well as to the, the audience, there'll be a series of questions, and what we'll do is we'll ask the question. You'll have two minutes to answer, each one of you. No rebuttals or no back and forth, nothing like that, just your answer to the question. And when, uh, myself and the uh, chairman of the uh, Brad Carver the, of the ninth, or excuse me, the 11th district, will be uh, handed off back and forth on the question, okay? So actually, uh, Chairman, if you have anything you want to say, you're welcome to do that, but we'll be, have you start with the first question. Thank you. Um, first of all, thanks to everybody being here. Uh, this is this is very, very important. We know how it is. Um, we, we I just want to echo one comment that, that we do have a, a tough fight on our hands. Uh, you all know what happened in the last election. We lost Cobb County. We lost Gwinnett County. Uh, demographic shifts are not in our favor at this point, and so we have a battle. And, and know this, that uh, the Democratic nominee is going to be pulling money from all over the country. There's going to be Hollywood money. President Obama is probably going to come down here and campaign. Uh, Michelle Obama is probably going to come down here and campaign. And, and, and every Hollywood actor you can think of uh, we'll probably be seeing here. So this is an all-hands-on-deck election, and, and we need to fight uh, to do that. Uh, I'm, I'm the chairman of the district, so uh, I, I will say that on behalf of Chairman Watson, I'm, I'm proud to be here, uh, and, and as well as Louis DeBrew, our Parto County Chairman, Trey Kelly, and Jason Shepard from uh, Cobb County. Uh, we welcome y'all to the 11th district. You're in the heart and soul of it right here in Ackworth. Um, uh, just for the audience's sake, uh, I am uh, non-committed in this race. These are all three good friends of mine. I have two Gwinnett County colleagues with, uh, with Melvin and Jason, uh, two uh, uh, congressional uh, district chairmen, and, and Chris and Jason, uh, an Army friend in Melvin, and I, I, I respect all three of you. Uh, in fact, I respect how you're running this campaign in a very positive manner, telling people what you're gonna do, because at the end of the day, we're all on the same team, and I, I just, I, I, my hats are all to you for putting your hat in the ring, because it's gonna be very, very important. First and foremost is going to be your role at the RNC. Uh, we know Charlotte is going to host us in 2020. Uh, I think Georgia being a purple state now, as we're developing to be, we're going to be in the running uh, in the future, maybe perhaps as early as 2024. And so whoever's elected here can set the groundwork for maybe the state of Georgia uh, hosting a national convention. But besides that, your national role um, my question to you is, this is the first time we've had every one of our 11th district uh, uh, Republicans challenged in this general election. The Democrats are going after everybody. I, I was floored to learn that every single one of our Cherokee delegation, for goodness sakes, uh, has Democratic challengers. So what are you going to do, and this is your two answer, two, two minute answer, what are you gonna do between now, when you're elected, and election day, to help us in the state party uh, rally the grassroots to win these elections. Jason? Thanks. <clears throat> I'll continue to do what I have always done. Make phone calls, go door to door, send mail out for folks. Um, and I'll tell you what, when, when we're talking about inclusion, one of the things I think we do as Republicans is we do the same things over and over again, so it gets boring, right? But we can go to these barbecues and we already know who's gonna vote for who, and it's like we're hand clap for each other. But we need to start doing things differently, and that's what I've always tried to do as district chairman, and right now I'm really excited to be working on historically black college and university setting up their charter. I'm helping to set up a charter, and hopefully by the time we're done, it'll be the largest organization in the state and that's, that's what my passion is. But as far as you know, the 11th district or even in my own district in the 7th, I'm gonna be doing what I always do, anything that's needed, I'm there. So um, it's interesting, I was having this kind of discussion with a couple of district chairs over the past weekend. My role right now, my assignment is 8th district chair. How can I be most effective in my role at 8th, 8th District Chair? So, uh, my friend Ed Painter here from 14th is here. I heard him give a discussion in Paulding County the other day, and I learned a little bit. And what Mr. Ed has done is he has looked at his counties and determined where the Democrats are most likely to, tar to target within the 14th District. 
and he is focusing his efforts to be a facilitator between the state party and the county chairs to be able to get resources to those counties to be able to move to send out door knock teams call making the making the phone calls doing all of our grassroots stuff i think from a practical point that that made a lot of sense to me and i shared that with a couple other district chairs and a lot of heads nodding and saying yep yep we need to do that here too so carmen's got a tough job because she wears like three or four hats at the state party um, but that's the role that we as district chair can step up and, and fill to be that be a facilitator not to get in the way at all of between the state party to the to the county chairs but to facilitate where we can so that's that's what i'm going to be doing and then additionally we've got i guess the seventh and the sixth with uh, rob woodall that's um, going to be targeted as well as karen handel and i'll do what we did uh last time with karen we brought a team up from south georgia so i anticipate our folks will come up and assist again with with knocking doors thank you i i will do what i have been doing since i've been involved and that is to continue to go out and knock on doors and go into those neighborhoods where we haven't traditionally gone before one thing I learned when I was in CLI, Coverdale Leadership Institute, and London, you know this, because the late Susan Weiner taught us this. People will never know where you are until you ask. I go and I ask. I helped charter the first college Republican group, Morehouse College Republican, with Sean Hanley when he was GOP chairman for Fulton County. We went and we had over 40 members to attend that event from Morehouse and Spelman. You would be surprised how many in those communities actually believe and have the same philosophy and ideals we do. We just don't ask. I go and I ask. I have spoken at NAACP meetings. They know I'm conservative. I wear it as a badge of honor and they respect me. When I won my state house race, when Obama was on the ballot in 2008, I beat President Obama with the black vote in my district <laughs> because they know me. They know me, I go and I ask, and I will continue to do that to let them know that we care about you. We want you to be independent and less dependent on the government. And that's the message we have to share with them. And under President Trump, as I stated before, the unemployment level is the lowest it has been in 40 years in African American communities. That's how we entertain it. That's how we convince them, hey, this works. We want you to be independent and less dependent on the government. And when you do that, that's better for all of us because I can continue to cut taxes, which I love. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, the next, next question, number three. How will you improve communications within the grassroots here in Georgia? Too much. Right. Well, like I've been saying since I started this, I'm going to be the most accessible national committee man you've ever had. I give out my cell phone number. I give out my cell phone number to clients, some of them abuse that privilege and call me in the middle of the night. Most people are pretty good about it, though, and respectful. So I'll, I'll travel around the state, I'm doing it now, um, and, and talk to, to groups whenever they want, but it's important to let people know what's going on at the RNC. Because to a certain extent, the RNC, and they do it primarily, I think, for security purposes, you can't really, if you go online, you really can't find out where the meetings are, what their agenda is and everything. And, and they do it because of security, but, but there are things that can be relayed back to the grassroots of the party. And right now, Ginger's doing a great job with that. I mean, we just, I'm sure you all got an email from her, and she's doing a wonderful job there. And I have to say, John is too, especially with getting us out of this hole with fundraising for here. He's got double duties though. So he's not only, he has to be our chairman here, but then he also represents us on the RNC. Um, so that's, that's a lot of work. Um, but 
I'll send out mailers, I'll show up to groups, I'll answer anybody's call anytime. That's what I'll do. So one of the ways that I hope to improve and, and plan to improve the communications among the grassroots is to form a uh, advisory uh, commission or advisory council, uh, it's probably a better term, that will be a two-way means of communication between uh, the grassroots and myself for, to me to have a good read on what's going on in the state, which I'll, I should already have anyway, just in terms of going out and, and being active. We, we, we've been pretty active. Uh, I, think I've, I think I've been uh, around Atlanta or within, within the metro region about, um, I'd say probably eight out of the last 10 weekends. So that's probably, I, I, we may not be that stepped up in terms of uh, uh, throughout my term, but I anticipate a great amount of travel across our state. And, uh, and, what, and what it will also do is it will, that will allow me to be able to communicate what I hear and see at the RNC to our folks and be able to uh, keep everyone apprised as to uh, what's going on at the RNC. And another means which I, I hope that we can do, I noticed that our website is uh, under construction right now with our, our state party. So uh, the, just the, the more that we can focus on uh, having a platform of getting our message out there as a party, uh, one of the ways you know, our, we've got to keep in mind that we have to be willing to transition and to change in order to, to bring, as, as young people, come up and we're very, very technologically engaged, more so than, than even, even I am, um, and all the different media, social media platforms, we need to be able to, to um, adequately communicate with those folks and share a message. And, and I've seen already some, some adjustments and some changes that, that are being made at State Party, and that's encouraging. Thank you. Um, I will use um, um, my format that I used when I was State Rep. I was accessible. I was the first, when I got elected, I was the first state representative to have a district office in this district, in kind contribution, so I could be accessible. I would be accessible by phone. I will travel to every county as I've done in the past, all 159. I've spoken at Tea Party rallies. Matter of fact, I was the first speaker at Sean Hannity's Tea Party rally down at the Capitol when we had 20,000 to show up. I was the first speaker. Spoken at Tea Party rallies in Savannah, LaGrange, Rome. I will continue to use that opportunity and avenue to take the message to the grassroots as far as what's transpiring at RNC. In addition to social media, in addition to the GOP website, Tap into that with the link to update you and keep you abreast of what changes or what, uh, what's going on at the RNC. And hold meetings and travel to every county, county commission meetings as far as uh, the GOP to make sure that the grassroots is involved and up to date on what's taking place at the RNC. I will be accessible. Thanks, and I know, and I just gotta validate you on that. I remember that rally. Uh, the, this is just the battle we always fight with the liberal media. Uh, the AJC totally misrepresented the number of people there that were April 15, 2009. My wife actually raised money from our uh, Republican elected officials to donate 15,000 pocket constitutions, and every single one of those was given out. So I don't know if it was 20,000, but it was definitely more than 15,000. Now switching from the grassroots, which uh, y'all have uh, uh, discussed, and, and communications, uh, the next uh, very, very important thing that we need as a party, which has already been alluded to, is fundraising. Now, again, uh, your, your key role is with the RNC and representing us in the RNC. But we want to get a, a, a grasp of your fundraising abilities what you have done in the past, what you were able to do, what your what your skill set is to help our chairman. Our chairman is doing a great job of fundraising, but it is it's an all hands on deck experience. So we take all the help we can get. So if anybody <laughs> in the room wants to help, you're welcome. 
Absolutely. So yeah, could y'all please comment on your specific fundraising past history and what you can do as the National Committee man? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so past history with fundraising and donating myself. Heck, I was just at uh, Matt Kroll's event at the Georgian Club the other night. Um, just gave some money to somebody else recently in Gwinnett. It's, it's constant. <laughs> but um, um, so it's, it's not only personally giving money and working on campaigns and making calls for people and things like that, but uh, I put on conferences and things where they were able to raise money and get new people to come in and, um, and use that for our district as well. And, and at the RNC, one of the more important things isn't as much about fundraising maybe as it is funds directing because the RNC actually is doing an awesome job right now. Rhonda McDaniel, Rhonda McDaniel is doing a great job of fundraising. They are, we are so far ahead of the Democrats right now. It's, it's incredible. And we've also surpassed them in technology, which is also great. Um, when I was back at, at the, uh, the RNC, committee, uh, RNC meeting in Nashville, they played a video of Hillary Clinton complaining about how great our technology is. That hasn't happened in the past. You know, we used to be the, what's it, the, 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 the 48 hour door to door thing. That's archaic, that's gone. Now people have, you know, the iPads, it's all in real time. We're on the ball with this now and, and uh, we're just going up. Um, but as far as funds directing is really important. And let me give you a great example of this. So, um, the chairman of the Michigan Republican Party, Saul Anuzis, um, former chairman, once gave the RNC about, I think it was about $7 million out of their state funds because they wanted to use it in Florida. And it was for, if I remember right, it was for the Romney campaign. All right, let me rattle that real quick. And then they decided, oh, we're, we're, we're gonna win Florida. Well, we didn't and they pulled out, and he said, well, I want the money back, and they said no. So, <laughs> so he ended up trying to run for, for RNC chairman because he was mad, uh, but um, there's, there's a lot of fun shifting around at the RNC, and that's one of the important things, too, is getting the money from them to Georgia, and we're, that's going on now. I mean, we've got, there's gonna be offices set up in the sixth and the seventh with combined RNC funds, um, and if you want to know more, you can probably ask Carmen. So, uh, one of the promises that I made when I ran for 8th District Chairman is that I would assist whomever was elected State Chairman, because that race was going on at the same time mine was, uh, I promised to work with that individual, whoever it was, to raise funds to help get our party out of the financial mess that it was in at that time. And so one of the first things we did is we had our big, uh, in our district, our fish fry, which, uh, which actually we have another one coming up, the same one we have every year. And uh, I'll mention it later, but um, we worked hard to raise money for that event. And we uh, voted as a district committee to, uh, we raised uh, 13,000 on the event profit, and we voted to give $5,000 of that to the state party for the purpose of paying down our debt. Uh, and that was part of me keeping a promise to help raise funds and it was all you know, true to a, it was a lot of hard work that from a lot of people in, in our district that made that happen. And so I was proud to be able to do that. The, the next thing we set about doing is working with Chairman Watson and keeping that promise to have him down to South Georgia to, uh, at, to have an event to where we um, let Chairman Watson explain why it's important for our contributors to uh, contribute to the Republican Party itself, not just the candidates. And we worked for about two months to, uh, to get a, a, a crowd of people, it's about 50 people. We put them in a corporate headquarters down in Thomasville and uh, Chairman Watson delivered the message. Uh, we, we worked with Sonny Harrison, our finance chair at the time, to, um, to go and collect the checks, and I'm happy to report to you, I, I think the last number that I heard was the amount was $62,500 that we were able to contribute. So um, 
I understand that, that Randy and Alec both work diligently at being able to raise funds for, uh, for the RNC, and I look forward to, uh, to continuing in that tradition. Thank you. As far as fundraising efforts, is, having been elected to city council and state rep, I'm very familiar with dollar for dollars. I'm connected to a lot of individuals that are very uh, uh, influential in the Republican Party. When Bruce Lavelle, who is now President Trump, President Trump's appointee for small business advocacy for small business reducing regulation. When he was chairman of the Gwinnett Republican Party, I assisted him in fundraising efforts to uh, grow the uh, coffers there uh, for the Republican Party in Gwinnett County. Um, I stand ready and willing and able to assist Chairman Watson and Carmen and the GOP with fundraising efforts for the GOP here in Georgia. And uh, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt because I have contacts with some very influential GOP people in the state of Georgia who are willing to open their checkbook and write checks, big checks, to the Republican Party. And I am um, not shy about asking for money because it's going to take some money to do what we need to do. And I know how to ask for money. And I, uh, as I said before, I uh, graduated from Coverdale Leadership who's a mentor of mine, Paul Coverdale, because the night I was elected to city council is the very same night he passed away. Mm -hmm. I was at my victory party, and I shut it down. He was a workaholic, and he knew how to dial for dollars, and I know how to dial for dollars, and I will be the first one to be on the phone dialing for dollars for the GOP, for the state of Georgia, because I want Georgia to, to, to continue to be a red state for a long time. Because I have um, a granddaughter, a grandson. My granddaughter is six, and my grandson is 21 months. Uh, even though they live in Raleigh, North Carolina, I want Georgia and this country to give them the same opportunities that were given to me. And I'm going to do my fit, my dead level best to make sure that they grow up in the great nation that I grew up in. And I will die for dollars to help those fundraising efforts. All righty, next. After the primary and runoff, it is apparent that the voters approve of Donald, uh, President Trump's uh, agenda. How will you assist, in, or advise rather, how will you advise the National Party to build more, or even more, uh, momentum in passing a conservative agenda? It's kind of the same thing I've always been doing. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if it broke, don't fix it. But there's, like I said, one of the things though, we, we, there's so many things that we can do differently. And, and uh, um, reaching out to communities that, including communities, you know one of the really terms that I hate is outreach, right? Because it seems like you're reaching out there. Really what we need to be doing is including people. And the more we include people, the more we talk about the message of conservatism, and the more we talk about the absolute, the facts of what's going on in our country with President Trump, that America is great again, the more people are gonna to wanna to come on board. And that's, a, that's an easy sale. Um, and I'll, I'll continue to do that uh, in any way I can, uh, whether, it's, whether it's speaking to groups like this or, or whether it's at, at any other sort of events. Um, the, uh, there, there, there are new ways to reach folks, obviously, we have new media, like social media, right? And, and those are new ways of, of, of reaching people. Now, not everything on social media is great, is it? But, but there are ways of doing it to reach out to new people, especially younger people that are on social media a lot, that are looking at either Facebook or Twitter. Vine doesn't exist anymore. But there's other things out there that we can do differently and reach a 
whole new population of people. Um, and that includes just showing up, showing up to things, and especially showing up to things that we normally don't do. Get out of our comfort zone and show up to different things. I think we get too comfortable showing up to the same things, and we need to do things a lot differently. Well, President Trump, to me, has been an absolute delight and thrill to watch his presidency. Sometimes that. Uh, Sometimes with the Twitter, you got to, you know, what, what's coming, you know, what, what's he going to say? But, but man, I mean, look at what he's done. It's like, I don't want to say we're the party of Trump, but, man, I mean, he's gotten, I think, uh, what was the, earlier this year, um, the Heritage Foundation has a list of things that they, um, that they hope for the president to accomplish, and it's like 600 things. It's like, it's a lot. I really like the Heritage Foundation. I really respect them, their work. Um, and he had, by like six months into the um, into his term, I think, if my recollection is right, uh, he had he had already accomplished like 50 or 80 percent of them. Um, tremendous to me. He's he's as as good as Reagan. I mean, in terms of what we're seeing, you look at our you look at the uh, the folks on the. Uh, our two nominees for the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, what, what an exciting opportunity. So to the extent that I can support him at the RNC, uh, you know, un, unwavering support, just, um, I think the, um, the Congress got it right when they got behind him and passed tax reform last year. Uh, the president, um, I, I was fortunate enough to be at a dinner that the president spoke at in Washington uh, in March, and, and uh, he said that he's getting ready to, uh, the, the two Kevins, my, my two Kevins, Kevin Brady and, and uh, Kevin McCarthy, he said, you guys get ready because in November we're going to have another tax bill come through and I want you guys to get behind it. So uh, I, I, hope, I hope that they do and uh, I think it will be more good things to come. Thank you. What can I do to um, increase the poll as far as more conservative policies being passed? for the nation, which will be great for the nation. As I have traveled with my good friend Bruce LaBelle, who's President Trump's appointee for a small business association, he's the advocate. One of the major things is further regulations. When I ran for f f further regulation reduction, when I ran for Secretary of uh, Labor, a labor commissioner, three things, less taxation, little litigation and regulation. We need less regulation on our businesses to get the government out of the way so business can do what they do best, and that is hire and put people to work. I was down in uh, Pulaski County visiting a company down there, and he shared with me some regulation that the federal government has on this business. They manufacture air filters for automobiles. One regulation where they have to be inspected by the federal government every three years cost that company $500,000 each time that inspection takes place. I said, what does it do if, if that regulation is not there? Will it affect nothing? Because the government put that on there. He said, I could take that $500,000, grow my payroll, hire more people, increase my benefits, so further regulation reduction on businesses. In addition to some of these archaic laws as far as, um, not archaic, but uh, entitlements, programs that we have, we, there's so much waste out there. Mm -hmm. I'd let two state agencies for Governor Deal. I could go on for days about the waste I found in those businesses and those departments. But I say further regulation reduction. Thank you. And this is a follow-up to that. Um, the, 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 the conventional wisdom was that uh, uh, nominee Romney was going to be the last white male Republican president that could win. We all know that uh, uh, President Trump turned that on its head and it's, it's very clear he did that by winning the uh, private sector union, white working class voters, uh, particularly in the industrial Midwest. 
So we now know have the formula and we have our new party. It is Trump's party. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a combination of traditional uh, conservative Republicans uh, and the working class. Now this is a little bit of a follow-up to that question and, and Melvin, you're gonna think I'm just pitching you a softball here. But um, we're doing very, very well there uh, with working class. His base is 100% still with him. Where we are still hurting, uh, though, uh, Trump did do better than Romney. He got 29% uh, uh, of the African or, or the Hispanic support versus 27% for Romney. Uh, he he did get 10% uh, uh, of the African American support versus 2% for uh, Romney. Uh, we are still way behind uh, in those areas. Uh, just for point of reference. Uh, George W. Bush got 44% of the Hispanic votes. So the battlegrounds for us, and particularly in a state as diverse as the state of Georgia, is winning non-traditional Republican voters. Uh, this is a very critical issue for us. Uh, we have had some hits on this issue uh, in, in, in recent history here in Georgia. How will you stand as a national committee man, and what will you do for us to reach out to non-traditional voters and bring them into the party. Well, I do like I'm doing now. I think, it could sound like a broken record here, but obviously do things differently than what we we're already doing. <laughs> so, what's the old phrase that if, you know, you wanna keep... Definition of insanity. Yes, definition of insanity is, yes, sorry. So anyway, we can do so many things that are different and and uh, that are different from the barbecue or the bake sale or the things that we're so used to doing and, and, and we're comfortable doing, and they're great. But there's a lot of things that we can do differently. And one of the things, like, for example, I'm in Gwinnett. So um, about a year ago, I went to a Vietnamese festival that was huge. You'd be surprised when you show up at, at different uh, festivals like this uh, for, for different ethnicities that aren't used to having folks go, they, they treat you like you're a rock star. They're so happy that you're there. But the problem is, is that we're used to doing the same things over and over again. And, you know, sometimes it's hard for us to break out of our comfort zone in the way that we do things, because we're so busy in our lives with work and kids and friends and things like that that but we, we need to start thinking differently. I'm not saying we think differently as far as our, our values and our principles are concerned because that's the, that's the bedrock of our party. I'm talking about we think differently on messaging and how we, how we get to people. And for example, one thing I always talk about with my wife is Democrats came out with a war on, you know, this so-called war on women, which there is no war on women, but they're great at messaging. We're always getting killed at messaging. So instead, what do we do? We don't put on good conservative Republican women on TV. We put we had Karl Rove on there talking about the war on women. Well, that's that's doesn't make any sense, does it? We got to start thinking about how to approach the messaging portion of this. That's that's primary number one, and then doing things differently as a party, um, as far as as far as the events that we do as well. Jason makes a great point on messaging. I 100% agree. It's one of the things I think was what makes President Trump so effective is he just goes right around the media. That is one of the beautiful things about his Twitter platform is he just goes right to them. And uh, you know, if he wants to kick CNN out of the out of the press conference, he just does. And um, I, I, I like it. And uh, so. If you look at the policies that we believe in, it helps all people of all races, of all backgrounds. And what we just need to do is to, like Jason mentioned, we just need to be better on messaging and getting it out there as to how our, our policies help everybody. Uh, like Mel mentioned earlier, the African-American employment number is um, something lowest that it's, it's... Lowest ever. Lowest ever. Incredible. So... Um, so yeah, with messaging and, and, and also reaching out as well. Uh, Mel and I were together in Henry County uh, a couple months back at a great event. What was the, what was the name of that? Uh, was the, the Black, Black Republican Council? Vivian Childs. Vivian Childs, yeah. Um, and some great candidates across the state, <coughs> the state that are 
uh, African Americans that are Republicans, and as much as we can help those folks, that's what we need to do. Right, messaging is very important, and the messenger is important as well. Uh, just two days ago, I got an, received an invitation from Farouk Rajani, inviting me to the Pakistani in, in the day, in, Independence Day celebration in Gwinnett County. I'm going to attend the Vietnamese celebration, the Indian Independence Day celebration. If I'm invited, I go. And I carry my conservative credentials with me. I talk about the success of President Trump, the success of the Republican Party, our ideas, our philosophies, one-on-one. -on -one. I dialogue with them. I talk with them. I don't talk to them. I talk with them and share with them how the Republican principles and policies will benefit them at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, it all comes down to your pocketbook. Dollars and cents. How that tax cut is going to help you. How the lowest unemployment level in African American Hispanic community is beneficial to you. How getting the government out of your way is best for you. When you talk that message, it resonates. But you have to be willing to go. And I have been going to every community in every part of this state for a long, long time. And we need to do it now more than ever. More than ever. The Ismaili community, the Muslim, which is the peaceful ones, they are so conservative. Matter of fact, they were supporting Case Cagle and Kim. They are there. They appreciate what President Trump is doing. I was up in Whitfield County with Chris, Dalton, Georgia. And lo and behold, there was a rally there. And here comes about 10 or 12 young Hispanics who were vehemently supportive of President Trump. Vehemently. So we have to continue to take that message to every ethnic group in this state to grow this party and expand the base of the GOP. So we will remain red for a very long time. Two questions left, yes. Are you okay? Yeah. I wanted, to, I wanted to be respectful of your time. If you need to go, we can go ahead and let you take the opportunity for your closing statement and get you on the road. We don't want you running down the highway, too. Are you all okay with that? If you want to do that? Right. Well, let me just say this. Um, I really appreciate you all coming tonight. And I like these guys, right? Friends. I know Melvin for a long time. I've, I've gotten to know Chris a lot more over. I met his family, his whole family. They're great. And um, we have a really unique opportunity right now that our next national committee man can really be somebody that's from the grassroots. And I think I'm that guy. And I'd like your support and your vote and the spirit of unity to you two. I love you guys. And, and, and if, if uh, you ever need me, you can always call me. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So yeah, we have two more questions. Uh, the next question to you, gentlemen, is transparency was an important issue to our primary voters. How will you help keep our elected officials accountable for their actions? Thank you. Um, one of the things that an idea was presented to me that sounded uh, sounds like a good idea. It sounds like I don't I can't think of a reason why we wouldn't. Is one of the first things we need to do is we need to have a platform in Georgia, a our state platform. And what what I actually hope to do is if we can get it, maybe Carmen can help answer this. But if we can get it before the committee on the 18th. I would say let's form a let's form a committee as a platform committee and first let the platform committee devise a platform that can be presented either before the uh, next state committee meeting or at the, at the state convention that sets forth what our platform is and then let's look at a process 
for having our elected officials, when they qualify as Republicans for office, they would sign the platform, they would be provided the platform, sign that sign they agree that they will um, adhere to the platform, and then have some mechanism in place if they don't adhere to the platform. Uh, as, as we all know, that might happen. And But what it could do is it's something have something with some real teeth that if they don't abide by the platform, you know, let it be clear, but we, we understand that, hey, you didn't, you, you said you were going to do this, you said you would vote for that, you didn't, well, here's the consequence. You knew it up front, and uh, so that's, I think that's in terms of, uh, of increasing transparency and holding our elected officials accountable, that's one tangible way where we could do that. I agree with that. When I ran for state rep, I signed, uh, uh, for transparency, I signed a no tax increase pledge myself. And that was one way my voters held me accountable. Because I was on record saying, I'm going down to the Capitol to represent you. And if I vote against your recommendation, then you have a right at the ballot box to vote me out of office holding that elected official accountable. And I agree wholeheartedly that we should do that. Because too many times we get down to the Capitol after we promise to do one thing and then we turn around and do something else. And as an electorate, you have an opportunity to hold that person accountable by voting them out of office. But I think we should have something in writing when that can uh, individual qualifies to be a candidate, you hold them to the fire in regards to what you pledged that you were going to do. And when you are not living up to that pledge, then the onus is on you as the electorate to vote your conscience with that individual. This is the last question. Um, this is dealing with unity and unification. Um, hands up in here, this was a, a, a painful process to uh, get to our nominees in July while all the Democrats sat back and threw hand grenades and raised money. Thank you. Um, I don't know if some of y'all may have seen, but I got interviewed by the Wall Street Journal and I was asked about this race and I invoked uh, Ronald Reagan's 11th commandment um, that we don't speak ill of our fellow Republicans. And I did learn that from you, Linda Parker, in the back row <laughs> and uh, Susan Weiner up in heaven. Um, and I, I, I said that, I mean, I, I stated that I wouldn't say anything bad about it. The point he was making to me was that this was a very bitter runoff election, and I'm focusing on the cable Kemp uh, governor's uh, runoff election. Um, and he, he asked me, he said, you know, what does that mean? Do you think that that means Stacey Abrams is going to win? Are y'all not going to come back together? And I told him, no, I think we'll come back together. And I cited the 2016 presidential election where Literally, Donald Trump uh, firebombed 16 <laughs> candidates in a very public way. Uh, we all know that. We all remember it. Um, most of us in this room were with other candidates first before we were with Donald Trump. Um, and, and we remember that. We all came back together. Uh, and here's some more numbers for you. Romney got 91% of the Republican vote uh, in uh, 2012. Uh, Donald J. Trump got 89% of the Republican vote. So we make a big deal out of these number Trumpers. They amount to about 2% of the party. They, they have loud mouths, but they're only about 2% of the party. So I think that we're going to do that. We had a wonderful unification, unity event uh, this past week and that y'all were at, that Jason, all of you were at. And so my question to you is a simple one, but it's an important one. How do we unify our party how do we unify our various factions that we have in the party? We know, let's recognize there are factions so that we can be a capable party of winning in November. Thank you, Brad, and that is, that is a great question. Um, and again, in the spirit of what Randy did, you know, I think he did a pretty good job of it. I hope to be able to take it and, and improve on it. But Randy represented across the board, I mean, he. You know, he was the convention chair normally. Um, I'm probably that's probably not the best role for me as being convention chair. Uh, national committee man is different; it's a different role. But representing all across our party, um, and the, the folks probably on the state committee would tell you, um, 
you know, it's I, I'm proud of the coalition that, that we've been able to build of that 130 people across our party that make up every every bit. You've got establishment, you've got um, you know, Southern, you've got GRA, you've got across the board the folks that that are uh, that have endorsed me, and, and that's you know that's something that that um, again is very validating and something that I will. Um, um, something that, that means a lot and, and we'll have great con consideration with um, going forward. And we, we've got a great party. We don't, we don't like a family. We don't always agree on everything. But when it comes time to go out on the field and take it to the Democrats in, in November, we come together and, and, and we, do, we, we handle our responsibilities. We handle our assignments. And, uh, and we've got a great party and I, and I look forward to if the state committee uh, chooses me for that position to be able to fulfill those responsibilities. Thank you, Brad. Thank you all for hosting and having this event tonight, and I'm just honored to be here. As you stated so eloquently, Brad, this past election runoff was one of the most heart-wrenching I had ever witnessed in my life. It pained me hit me right here. I was afraid, and I'm afraid we gave the Democrats all the ammunition they needed. We gave them everything, no matter who came out as our party. <coughs> we gave, they didn't have to do any operation research. We gave it to them. We gave it to them, I know this is a contact sport, I know. But it pained me, and I spoke about this in Gwinnett County. When I see friends who've been speaking to each other for years, won't even speak to each other now because their candidate didn't win. It pains me when we have bigger fish to fry in November. We have to unite. We have to. Whomever emerge as our nominee, we have to unite behind that individual because the very existence of this state and this country is at stake, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to tell you. I lived abroad. I've seen how other nations do. And I don't want to see my great America Resort to that because we live in the greatest nation on the planet. But if we're not careful, we're going to lose everything. We're this close. So we have to come together. And I'm going to do everything within my power to make sure that we're successful in November to maintain this great state and this great United States of America. And we do that by sitting down and respecting each other with the difference of opinion, but coming together after it's over with and uniting behind that individual and march on to victory in November. We must. As President Bush said to me when I was in the White House with him after 9-11, he said, this enemy that we're facing this is one like we've never seen before. We must, we must not tire, we must not falter, we must not fail, or America will be no more. With that, thank you, and I humbly ask you for your support to be the next National Committee man. Two fine gentlemen, but I feel I'm the best candidate for this position, for this point in time in the history of the state of Georgia. Thank you so very much. I'm sorry we clapped that, guys. <laughs> um, now, y'all actually use that last question to a large degree as your, as your closing statements, but you actually do have closing statements, and Jason actually did take advantage of that before he left. So, you know, um, you, it, it's, you have the floor. I'll, I'll, go, I'll just be real brief. Okay. Sure. Well, again, thanks so much for coming out. Um, it's been 
Um, it's been a lot of hard work that's been put into this race by these candidates over this last year. I have very much appreciated the opportunity to get to meet and know so many people around our state that make up our party. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of fun. As the state committee members will tell you, there a lot of them are faced with um, difficult, a difficult decision. But the decision is who is going to most effectively represent us at the RNC. Who's, who's the best one for the position? It's like a, it's like a team, a football, baseball team. You know, who's the right one for the role? We all have different, different roles, and um, and I feel like. The, the, the folks, again, that list of 60 county chairs from across the state, 130 um, grassroots and, and Republican activists um, that believe that, that Chris West, that I'm the, the right one for the, that position, it's very humbling, it's, um, it's, it's validating for the work that we put in, and I ask for your support. I ask uh, if, you're a, if you're a state committee member or if you're a, a, in our party and you've got a particular question of a reservation why, what's the reservation of why not vote Chris West? I, I would ask you to, to come to me and let's talk about it. Um, I, I welcome any questions that, uh, that any of you might have. I'm, I'm a, I, I pride myself in being a very transparent person and I, I look forward to, to having any of those conversations with you. Um, again, check out my, my website. I, did, I didn't give my cell phone number earlier and we'll make sure I do that. I've had the same number for over 15 years. I'm not going to change it anytime soon. It's 229. 873-0687 and, uh, and do check out our website. It's www.chriswest.gov. Thank you. All right. First of all, we thank you, you both and also Jason for being here and participating. Uh, we thank all of y'all and hopefully we have some uh, maybe live that are watching as well. All right. Uh, the next part of this is the time is 719 if I'm looking at that right. Uh, we have the we have the building till nine. They're all yours. You can approach them and talk to them individually or together, however you want to. But that was the other part of this. The last part was we wanted to make sure that there was time that if you wanted to talk to them individually, you could. All right. Thank you again for coming out and safe travels. Linda.